House of the Dragon Season 2 is all set to hit the screens on June 16th, and our watch is finally coming to an end. To elaborate a bit on the premise of the show, it is a fantasy series based on the book Fire and Blood by George R. R. Martin. The series begins nearly a hundred years after Aegon's conquest, which united the Seven Kingdoms in Westeros under the Targaryen rule, and is set nearly 200 years before the events of the Game of Thrones series. House of the Dragon follows the rise and fall of the Targaryen dynasty, and mainly centers on the Civil War, Dance of the Dragons, which is mainly a conflict between the warring factions of Blacks and Greens for the Iron Throne. Now, Blacks are the supporters of Queen Rhaenyra I Targaryen, her father, King Viserys I, Targaryen's chosen heir to succeed him. Greens are the supporters of King Aegon II Targaryen, the son of King Viserys, and his second wife, Queen Alicent. Dance of the Dragons, like any war, comprise many battles. Today, we are going to do a deep dive into the 12 major ones. However, before we proceed any further, we want to warn you that there will be spoilers ahead. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Assault on Harrenhal Assault on Harrenhal is amongst the initial battles that takes place during the Dance of the Dragons. It took place after Prince Aegon was crowned King Aegon II at King's Landing, and Princess Rhaenyra was crowned Queen Rhaenyra I at the Dragonstone. When King Aegon learned of her crowning, he sent her terms of peace if she bent the knee to him. Queen Rhaenyra refused, with neither the king nor the queen willing to give an inch. The dance began. First, Queen Rhaenyra's husband, Prince Daemon Targaryen, flew on his dragon, Caraxes, to the top of King Spire Tower in Harrenhal. It was where Heron the Black had died when King Aegon I Targaryen, atop his dragon, Balerion, burned down Harrenhal and wiped out House Hor during Aegon's conquest. Not wanting a repeat of the same, Sir Simon Strong, the Castellan, immediately surrendered to Prince Daemon. In this way, Prince Daemon managed to win Harrenhal for Queen Rhaenyra in what came to be known as the Assault on Harrenhal. It proved to be a vital victory for the Blacks right at the beginning of the dance. Now, Assault on Harrenhal precedes Prince Lucerys Valerion's death, which took place right at the end of the House of the Dragon Season 1. So, whether we get to see Assault on Harrenhal in Season 2 remains to be known. The Fight Over Shipbreaker Bay The Fight Over Shipbreaker Bay, as it came to be known later on, is amongst the first instances where a dragon fought a dragon during the Dance of the Dragons. It was as tragic as it was unfortunate, as it led to the beginning of the Civil War in earnest. Before the events over the Shipbreaker Bay, Queen Rhaenyra had sent her elder son, Prince Daesiris Valerion, to the north to win over the lords there for her side, and sent her younger son, Prince Lucerys, to the Stormlands to win over Lord Baras Baratheon. Once Prince Lucerys arrived there, he saw that Prince Aemon Targaryen, King Aegon's younger brother, had arrived before him and had already won over Lord Baras. Having lost Lord Baras's support, he started his journey back to Dragonstone on his dragon, Arax. Prince Aemon followed him on his legendary dragon, Vagar. What followed was a fight between Vagar and Arax, which ended with Prince Lucerys and Arax falling to their deaths in the waters. Now, Fire and Blood says that Prince Aemon intended to kill Prince Lucerys, but the House of the Dragon interpreted it as being unintentional on Prince Aemon's part, with him just losing control of his dragon, whatever it was. The fight had far-reaching consequences. While Queen Rhaenyra broke down in despair upon hearing the news of her younger son's death, Prince Daemon said, a son for a son. This need for vengeance led to the blood and cheese events later on which led to the death of King Aegon's eldest son, Prince Jaehaerys. Civil War in the Riverland Following the deaths of Prince Lucerys and Prince Jaehaerys, both sides became enraged and the dance intensified. The Riverlands became the first battleground for the Blacks and the Greens. Lord Samwell Blackwood, who was loyal to Queen Rhaenyra, led his men into Bracken's lands, who were loyal to the Greens. They pillage and spoil the Bracken lands. The Brackens gather their forces and retaliate. During this confrontation, Sir Amos Bracken killed Lord Blackwood, only to be killed sometime later. Despite the death of their leader, the Blackwood forces scraped a win in what came to be known as the Battle of the Burning Mill. The Brackens, facing defeat, retreated to their stronghold, Stonehenge. However, upon reaching Stonehenge, they find that Prince Daemon had already captured Lord Humphrey Bracken and seized their castle in what came to be known as 
the taking of the Stonehenge. With no other option, the Brackens were forced to surrender. This also led the others loyal to King Aegon and Riverland to switch their allegiance to Queen Rhaenyra. Soon, King Aegon becomes alienated within the Riverland. Battle of Duskendale and Rook's Rest After losing Riverlands, King Aegon loses more supporters to Queen Rhaenyra. Becoming more and more desperate, he sacks his hand, Otto Hightower, and appoints Sir Criston Cole as his new hand. Under Sir Criston's brutal and military-like approach toward the role, things begin to look up for the Greens. They first behead Lord Darklin at Duskendale and then move toward Rook's Rest, the seat of House Staunton. Having been warned about their arrival, Lord Staunton orders to close the gates and manages to send a raven to Queen Rhaenyra for support. Princess Rhaenys Valerion arrives atop her dragon, Melis, the Red Queen. What follows is the battle at Rook's Rest. Sir Criston was prepared for this and had archers and crossbowmen fire at her. Melis, however, managed to burn men and horses, and that's when Aurora greeted her. It was King Aegon flying toward her on Sunfire the Golden. Following him was Prince Aemond on Vagar. Much to Princess Rhaenys's credit, she did not flee and faced them head on. As flames danced several feet above the sky, Melis had just managed to get her jaws around Sunfire's neck when Vagar came down and all three of them plummeted to the ground. Princess Rhaenys and Melis were killed, while King Aegon and Sunfire suffered from severe wounds. Only Vagar managed to escape unscathed during this battle. Overall, while the sack of Duskendale went well for the Greens, the battle at Rook's Rest proved a heavy one for both the Greens and the Blacks. King Aegon and Sunfire suffered from severe injury, with King Aegon needing time to recuperate and Sunfire becoming temporarily flightless. These events lead to Prince Aemon becoming Prince Regent and Protector of the Realm. Battle of the Gullet After Princess Rhaenys' death, her husband, Lord Corlys Valerio, blamed Queen Rhaenyra for it. Things became bitter within the Black's ranks, and a lot fell on the shoulders of Prince Jaceres. Now, the dance verged upon who had the most dragons. While Blacks had more dragons on their side, they were short of dragon riders, as most of these dragons were unclaimed. This led to a call for Dragon Sea, the baseborn Targaryen, to try and claim the unclaimed dragons. Prince Jaceres offered a lot in return. As expected, many came forward to claim the unclaimed dragons, and four emerged victorious. Vermithor, the Bronze Fury, one of the oldest and biggest dragons, was claimed by Hugh the Hammer. Silverwing was claimed by Ulf the White. Sea Smoke was claimed by Adam of Hall. Sheep Stealer, a wild dragon, was claimed by a girl called Nettles. Stronger than ever before, Prince Jaceres planned to attack King's Landing early in the New Year, flying atop his dragon, Vermax, and with four other dragons by his side. Prince Jaceres rained fire on the Green's fleet in what came to be known as the Battle of the Gullet. However, this battle proved to be a costly one for both sides. The Blacks lost a number of lives, with the lives of Prince Jaceres and Vermax being amongst them. Moreover, Queen Rhaenyra's younger son, Prince Viserys, was taken captive, while her other younger son, Prince Aegon, fled for his life. On the other hand, the Greens were not able to break the Valerion stronghold, and their allies suffered many losses. Still, it can be said that it was a tactical victory for the Blacks. Battle of the Honeywine Battle of the Honeywine was a battle that took place in the Reach. Sir Ormond Hightower was in quite a bit of trouble as his forces were taking one blow after another. The House Hightower were the supporters of King Aegon, as his mother, Queen Alicent, was a Hightower as well. Yet, many major houses of the Reach had declared for Queen Rhaenyra. As time progressed, Sir Hightower's army was on the verge of defeat as they were being attacked from both sides. However, it was the timely intervention of Prince Daeron, the younger brother of King Aegon, atop his dragon, Tessarion, the Blue Queen which turned the tide in the Hightower's favor and routed their enemy. For his timely intervention, Sir Ormond Hightower knighted Prince Daeron as Sir Daeron the Daring. This loss proved to be quite a heavy one for the Blacks, and there was chatter amongst the Queen's ranks that she must bend the knee to her brother. But Queen Rhaenyra was unwilling to concede, and the war waged on. Fall of King's Landing at King's Landing, Prince Aemon, now the Prince Regent and Protector of the Realm, determined that the major threat to the Greens came from Prince Daemon, and without him, the Black's forces would crumble. When Prince Daemon was trying to gather forces at Harrenhal, Prince Aemon decided that the time had come for the Greens to retake Harrenhal. As the Greens marched toward Harrenhal, the Black seized this opportunity to attack King's Landing. Queen Rhaenyra arrived atop her dragon, Cyrax, while Prince Daemon arrived atop his dragon, Caraxes. As the King's Landing saw the dragons approaching, they panicked 
while Queen Allison tried to gather and command her city's remaining defenses and sent the Gold Cloaks, the city's watch, to defend King's Landing. They turned on the Greens as they were loyal to their once commander, Prince Daemon. King's Landing fell in a day. Queen Helena and Queen Allison were taken as prisoners, while King Aegon escaped with the help of Sunfire. Meanwhile, Queen Rhaenyra took her rightful place on the Iron Throne. Her first order was to make every person in the castle kneel before her and pledge fealty to her. First Battle of Tumbleton The First Battle of Tumbleton began when Sir Ormond Hightower took his army toward King's Landing from the Reach. Queen Rhaenyra sent Sir Hard Hugh Hammer and Sir Alf White with their dragons, Vermithor and Silverwing, to defend Tumbleton, her stronghold. While the Greens outnumbered the Blacks there, the fact that the Blacks had two mighty dragons on their side gave them an advantage. The Blacks gained an early advantage at Tumbleton. However, the tide turned when Sir Hard Hugh Hammer and Sir Alf White betrayed the Blacks and set the town ablaze with their dragons. For this reason, the battle also came to be known as the Treasons of Tumbleton, and Sir Hard Hugh Hammer and Sir Alf White came to be known as Two Betrayers, the Greens, having gained advantage, sacked Tumbleton and committed widespread atrocity, which left the town in chaos. Fall of Dragonstone During the fall of King's Landing, King Aegon had managed to escape. He then went into hiding and hid on Dragonstone. Now, Dragonstone was a stronghold for Queen Rhaenyra. However, King Aegon convinced several of the Blacks to defect to the Greens. With their help, he took over Dragonstone. During this, King Aegon faced a challenge in the form of Lady Bela, Targaryen, the daughter of Prince Daemon and Lady Lena Valerion. She mounted her dragon, Moondancer, and met King Aegon and Sunfire above the castle. As the dragons danced in the sky, Sunfire managed to gain the upper hand and slammed into the yard. During the fall, King Aegon shattered his legs. Sunfire was also severely wounded. Lady Bela, while wounded, still managed to crawl away from Moondancer as the dragon lay dying. The battle ended in a victory for the Greens. However, it came at a great cost. It crippled King Aegon and left Sunfire wounded. Meanwhile, Lady Bela was also severely wounded and Moondancer had died. Battle Above the God's Eye The battle above the God's Eye is amongst the greatest, if not the greatest, battle in the Dance of the Dragons. So you see, Prince Daemon had taken up with the Dragon Seed, Nettles. Prince Daemon and Nettles had been staying as guests. As House Mouton's castle at Maidenhood, when Queen Rhaenyra got a whiff of her husband's betrayal, she demanded Lord Manfred Mouton to decapitate Nettles and send her head. However, Lord Mouton refused to do so, as it meant that he would be breaking the guest right, a very sacred custom in the Seven Kingdom. On the other hand, if he did not heed Queen Rhaenyra's commands, he would be denounced as a traitor. So, he decided to pretend that he never received her letter, and later informed Prince Daemon about what Queen Rhaenyra wanted. Prince Daemon thanked him and next day sent Nettles away. Later, he returned to Harrenhal, where he waited for Prince Aemon for 13 days. Prince Aemon arrived on the 14th day atop his dragon, the great Vagar, and his pregnant lover, Alice Rivers. He left Alice with a kiss and turned to face Prince Daemon and Caraxes. The two mounted their dragons and battled above the god's eye as the sun was setting in the sky. Onlookers said that the sky itself burned with flame as the dragons attacked one another. When the two tumbled from the sky, it looked as if Prince Daemon had jumped from one dragon to another and drove his sword, Dark Sister, into Prince Aemon's eye. Both the dragons fell into the lake, and as Vagar drowned, Caraxes managed to crawl to the shore with a torn wing and a torn belly. He died only a few moments later. Prince Aemon and Vagar's remains were found years later. However, Prince Daemon's remains were nowhere to be found. However, it was said that he died as well. Amongst the greatest battles in the dance, it really favored no side. Both sides lost great warriors and even greater dragons. Vagar, the last remaining dragon from King Aegon, the Conqueror's era, one who had facilitated the conquest, had passed, and with her, the conquest's legacy. Second Battle of Tumbleton Things went from bad to worse for the Blacks after Prince Daemon's death. Once the realm of delight, the small folk started to turn against Queen Rhaenyra as she imposed heavy taxes on them. When she imprisoned Lord Corlys Valerion for treachery, the Valerion fleet abandoned her. Then after Queen Helena, who was much loved by the small folk, fell to her death, the people of King's Landing rose in riot against her. This led to the storming of the Dragon Pit, which led to the deaths of several dragons, including Queen Rhaenyra's own Cyrax. The storming of the Dragon Pit also resulted in Queen Rhaenyra's son, Prince Joffrey Valerion's death as well. She had no option but to flee King's Landing, along with her remaining son, Prince Aegon Targaryen. So, having heard of the unrest in the King's Landing, the Greens' forces in Tumbleton began thinking it best to attack King's Landing, except for Sir Hobart Hightower, who was hesitant. There was another problem for the Greens. 
with Prince Amon dead and King Aegon still missing, they were without a leader, so they planned to crown Prince Daemon as the Prince of Dragonstone. However, Sir Hard Hugh Hammer and Sir Off White had other plans. Sir Hard Hugh Hammer believed that he must be crowned king, as he had the oldest and the greatest dragon still alive, Vermithor. Meanwhile, Sir Off White prepared for his coronation. Having heard of this, Lord Unwin Peak, a supporter of the Green, and Sir Hobart plotted the deaths of Sir Hard Hugh Hammer and Sir Off White, along with eleven other landed knights. Before they could carry out their plan, Tumbleton was attacked by Adam Valerion, his dragon, Sea Smoke, and an army of four thousand who were still loyal to Queen Rhaenyra in what came to be known as the Second Battle of Tumbleton. Prince Daeron and Sir Hard Hugh Hammer had been killed, while Sir Off White slept through the battle, meaning their dragons were riderless. Adam Valerion and Sea Smoke battled the riderless Vermithor and Tessarion in the air. It ended with Vermithor killing Seismo, only to succumb to his wounds a little while later. Tessarion, injured and unable to fly, soon died as well. Adam had also been killed during the battle. However, Silverwing did remain alive, as she had avoided the battle after being hit by a crossman's bolt once. Singer later sang that when she arrived at the scene the next day, she tried to lift Vermithor's wing three times with her nose, but to no avail. Meanwhile, the Greens retreated and were unable to take over King's Landing. Battle of the King's Road by the time of the Battle of the King's Road, Queen Rhaenyra had been killed by King Aegon. She was fed to his dragon, Sunfire. With her death, Queen Rhaenyra's forces had also abandoned King's Landing. The coast was clear for King Aegon to take over King's Landing. However, those loyal to Queen Rhaenyra still remained. The Rivermen were advancing to the city, led by Lord Kermit Tully, Lord Benjakot Blackwood, and Alysanne Blackwood. Lord Barras Baratheon met them head on, but he and his forces were defeated in what came to be known as the Battle of the King's Road. After the Battle of the King's Road came King Aegon's death. With Lord Barras defeated, the city was left vulnerable to the Rivermen, who were also joined by Lord Cregan Stark's forces. Arriving from the north, Lord Corlys Valerion, who was now serving King Aegon, advised him to concede defeat and take the Black. He refused. Sometime later, he was found dead from poisoned wine. To this day, it is not known who killed King Aegon. However, some 22 suspects were arrested. King Aegon II's death ended the Civil War, Dance of the Dragons, and led to his half-nephew, Prince Aegon Targaryen, ascending to the Iron Throne as King Aegon III. Marvelous Virgin. So there we are, folks, with the 12 major battles from the Civil War, Dance of the Dragons, defined by violence and death. It sowed the seeds for the downfall of the Targaryen dynasty. Dance of the Dragons contributed to the extinction of dragons, as the last of the Targaryen dragon also died after the dance. With them, the Targaryen dynasty was not the same. Furthermore, Dance of the Dragons brought about changes in the Targaryen succession laws as well. With male preference, primogeniture becoming more entrenched. Worst of all, it only left death and destruction behind, just like any other war. Like always, we want to know what you think about the 12 major battles. Which battle are you looking forward to seeing in the House of the Dragon? Please let us know in the comments below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks everyone!